Welcome back. This is Goku Sun DBC. This is going to be a top 10 list of 10 games. If you haven't played, I highly recommend you play as well as collect. I've already done a top 10 list for, of course, PS4 and Xbox One. This is going to be a list of, in my opinion, 10 games you should really check out for the Xbox 360. And next week I'm going to be giving you a top 10 list for the original Xbox that you should play, check out, and collect for. With that said, let's get started. And yeah, I'm playing some Xbox original music in the background from Jet Set Radio Future. First couple of honorable mentions. Uh, a lot, most of these are going to be multi-platform, but I feel played better on the 360 overall, personally. With that said, first honorable mention is... The Darkness, based off of, of course, the comic book series done by Top Cow Comics, uh, as well as the same people who, of course, created Witchblade as well. Darkness is a really cool character, honestly. These games are definitely brutal, even more so the second game in the series. When it comes to Blengor, it definitely deserves the M rating, but it's a really fun game overall, and I highly recommend you check it out if you ever get the chance. Definitely play and check out The Darkness. It's definitely a lot of fun if you like action, and it's all in first-person viewpoint. Next up is a game, I'm not big into racers, but on occasion I actually will, on occasion if I feel in the mood, I will play this racing game, which is why it's an honorable mention. And yeah, it's an exclusive, of course, and that is Forza Motocross number three, which graphically still looks pretty impressive, given this is several years old now. Coming next may be considered somewhat controversial, the last of honorable mentions, but these are my own personal picks. Less honorable mention, I actually rather enjoy this. Why so many people bash it, I do not know. Less honorable mention is Halo 4. I recently just started playing it. I genuinely actually like it. And I don't mind the single player story mode. I'm okay with it. But keep in mind, I'm more of a single player person and like single player campaigns. If I'm going to play a shooter, it's got to have a single player campaign mode. Otherwise... I'm not really gonna even give it the time of day, basically. That's just me. Coming in at number 10 is a game, of course, from Square Enix. Now, the most recent game I haven't played yet, exclusively for PS4. I've heard a lot of people say it's not very good, but I will say this is easily probably my second favorite in the series. And this is coming at number 10, I recommend you check out. Star Ocean The Last Hope from, of course, Square Enix. And definitely, it's a very much worthy game to check out. Has really good combat mechanics. I think it's really fun, honestly, overall. If you like traditional Square games with, like, epic boss battles and things like that. And graphically, it looks really good, too. That's one thing I'll say. Graphically, I would put it on par with... Honestly, Final Fantasy 13. So, yeah, and the old state, the graphics are actually really good. It's generally a really fun game. I just like it because it still has that more traditional Star Ocean feel to it. Now, in my opinion, the best Star Ocean game would be on the original PlayStation. Coming at number 9, I highly recommend you play... And it's not as good, I feel, as the first, but definitely still worthy of being my top 10 picks that I highly recommend you check out for the 360. And that is Portal 2. Now, if you want a multiplayer thing, there is a co-op mode. You can play with a friend online. So, it does add a little extra replayability there for the most part. It does have a lot of replayability unless you're somebody like me who just likes playing puzzle games, platformer type stuff like that. That's what this is, basically. It's a combination platformer puzzle game. More or less, that's the best way to describe. But in first person view, which gives it a little bit more refreshing feel and take. And I think the gameplay is honestly a lot of fun. Just like the first one, 
I think it's a little bit more mixed up and stuff, this game. It's not as straightforward as the first game was. But it has a lot longer playable gameplay-wise. It's going to take you about probably three, four times longer to beat, unlike the first game, which took me maybe about one hour. Coming in number eight will also be considered a little controversial, but... I don't give a crap. I really like this game, and I've enjoyed it. And I've beat, every time I, so far I've played this game, I've managed to only die one time in the whole game. That's not bad. I'm still, though, trying to play the game without dying once so I can get a trophy for it. But coming in number 8, I highly recommend you check out Fable 3. I know a lot of people think it's way too linear and have a lot of issues like the Unlimited Magic. It makes you kind of OP. This is true, but I personally don't mind it. And I like the ability to be able to mix and match your, like, once you level up to a certain point, ability-wise, you'll be able to combine two magic abilities into one. My personal favorite cross combination is lightning and fire together. So you can do a combination fireball with electricity, so you both burn and electrocute your enemy at the exact same time. And it's fun throwing one of those charged up at the enemy, make him go flying backwards. It's a lot of fun. But Fable 3 comes at number 8. I highly recommend it. And you can get this game for about 5 bucks or so. So it's definitely cheap, easy to get a hold of. It's not hard at all to get one of these. And I highly recommend you check it out. I'm still playing this game on occasion because I'm still trophy hunting. And there's a lot of trophies in this game, so if you like the challenge of trophy collecting, this is definitely going to be a good game for those trophy hunters out there. Coming in at number 7, I only recently finally started playing, and I'm definitely down and really enjoying it. I like the re envision of the timeline and stuff. It's something I recently picked up at one of my local game stops, which I have like three near. And coming in number seven is Tomb Raider. But this is the Game of the Year edition. So it includes a little extra DLC, extra maps and everything. Though I haven't played the multiplayer mode in this game. And don't intend to. I genuinely really like the single player mode. It's kind of weird at first, not having your normal handguns all the time, instead more or less a bow. But I kind of like the challenge that that actually adds to the gameplay. And the mechanics, for the most part, I think are pretty solid overall. And I like the reimagining from the previous games in the series. For me, I actually would probably have to rank this right now maybe my second favorite game in the franchise as a whole. Favorite is still... Tomb, uh, was it uh, Tomb Raider Last Revelation, which I remember playing best on the Sega Dreamcast. It's still my favorite only because it revolves around Egypt. But seriously, if you get a chance, collect this, whether it be for PS3 or for 360, though I'm recommending it for the 360. For those who enjoy good single-player story modes, enjoy good... Explore, exploration and good game mechanics, you're going to definitely enjoy this. Coming in at number 6 is a game I recently record most of the story mode gameplay and everything from. But this is where it all started. And I think, but I only recommend because this is the only console I played this version on, the first one. And coming in at number 6 is of course Mirror's Edge, the original. Though, Callus is more of a reimagining, more than anything. Still, this is a very straightforward. It's not open world like the new one. But still, even though it doesn't have full CG cutscene stuff, I don't mind that one bit. I'm not one of these uh, graphic, you know, high society graphic snob type people. To me, I just appreciate good, unique art style, and that's what stands out to me with this game and the other one. I just like the art style of Mirror's Edge. I think it's refreshing and different. I like the crisp and vibrant brightness, like the super whites and everything. 
in the world. I just find it a lot of fun in general to play. Definitely if you're looking for some to just kill some time and just get into a game world that's a little different than what you're used to. This is a game, really Mirror's Edge and I feel Portal are the most unique first person viewpoint games out there honestly. If you like first person views. These are definitely awesome games to check out and I can't recommend highly enough Mirror's Edge and Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Coming in at number 5 is I feel one of the most overlooked at most underrated JRPGs of the last console generation. And that is Lost Odyssey. Easily one of the best RPGs I played on, or should I say JRPGs I played on the 360 and it's a console exclusive. It's a 4 disc 360 game. Now if you want to play all submissions and everything total, unlock everything, you're looking at least probably about 150 hours of gameplay. And also, for those trophy hunters, you're going to find a good challenge in this game as well. So, there's a reason why it came in at number 5. I think it's really fun. If you're a Final Fantasy fan, you will, I believe, enjoy this. Some of the people that worked on the team of Final Fantasy 7 as well, Final Fantasy 8, also worked on this. So, for old school Final Fantasy fans, I think you will appreciate this game. Coming in at number 4. May not have the greatest overall games, but because the Dreamcast holds a special place and it is my second favorite game console of all time. So no surprise this comes in at number four. And this is the Dreamcast Collection. This includes Bass Fishing, uh, Space Channel 5, Crazy Taxi, and the original Sonic Adventures. I will never play this sh fishing game because I don't give a crap about fishing games. But, this collection is awesome for those other three games. Crazy Taxi is a fun, awesome game, and I love hearing a bunch of music from The Offspring. Honestly, that's a rock band I really enjoy big time, and that's one thing I like about the soundtrack. And it's a lot of fun. The more crazy, faster cuts you get to stuff, the larger tips you get. It's just a lot of fun. Who would have ever expected a game being a taxi driver would end up being actually a very enjoyable experience. Same thing for Space Channel 5, well, Part 2. It's a very unique, to say the least, uh, niche type genre of players that I think really would appreciate it. And the heavy cheese involved. And of course, Sonic Adventures, which in my opinion is the second best Sonic game of all time. Second only to Sonic 2 on the Sega Genesis. Coming in at number three is I feel the best fighting game on the console and that is Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. Though it's not the true ultimate because now you have last round. But definitely for past gen this is easily the best. You end up having like an additional five characters added to this version plus new stages and everything added music, tracks, but it's a lot of awesomeness, bringing back old school characters, plus bringing in more virtual fighter characters, which is always cool. Really what they should have called this series really is Dead Alive vs. DOA vs. Virtual Fighter. Number two, I think easily the best collection for past gen consoles, the orange box comes in at number two. Do you get a bang for your buck? It's about $20 on average. You can get this, and that's a steal. You get the original Portal. You get the complete Episodes 1 and 2 of Half-Life 2, and you get Team Fortress 2. For any of you Valve fans out there, this is like one of the best collections ever put together, hands down. I don't care whether you play on 360, PS3, or on Steam. This is a collection that is a must-have for any fan of, really, a Valve. Team Fortress 2 is um, a real ride, in all honesty. It's just really funny. I love the graphics because it reminds me of, like, Pixar and other animated studios, but it's very M-rated. Half-Life 2, well, what can I say about Half-Life that hasn't already been said? 
I don't treat it like the greatest thing ever invented, but it's still a very fun experience. But my favorite is the original Portal on here. That is literally almost like one of the most perfect games I've ever played. And I love the meme, The Cake is Alive. Number one, in my opinion, best game on the 360. And this is the version you want, the Platinum re-release, because it includes all the DLC content on disc. Coming in, number one, I feel is the number one must-collect game for any 360 collectors out there, Fable 2. And yeah, as I said, get the Platinum Hits, because it includes the extra content, it includes more side quests, locations, choices, and many other extras. So definitely, if you ever get a chance, you gotta play, and it's by far probably the considered by most to be the best in the Fable series. Personally, Fable of the Lost Chapters, Fable 1 is still my all-time favorite, but Fable 2 is definitely up there in all honesty. So if you're looking for a good, like, Western RPG, though with elements of being more linear, you're definitely going to enjoy this game. And I think it's a lot of fun. The gameplay is, for the most part, really smooth. I love the mechanic with the dog which is another reason I also like Fable 3, because I love having the dog. Very useful. But I'll get ready to cut this video. Leave a comment below. Tell me what are your recommendations of 360 games you think people should collect. Because let's be honest, price-wise, the PS3 and the 360 are two of the best consoles right now to collect for. Since they're just past-gen, you can get a lot of games under $20. So this is some of the best time to be collecting for these consoles while you can get good prices before they shoot through the roof like the PlayStation 1 is now and like PS2 is starting to become more expensive as well. But with that said, I'll see you all next time and give you my thoughts and recommendations on what 10 games you should check out for the original Xbox. And I'll see you all next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel.